Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQV test management certifications and we are in chapter one talking about managing the test activities. We are, we are still with our first segment that is 1.1 test process and today we shall be talking about the next sub segment of that that is 1.1.2 test monitoring and control activities and we'll be understanding what it takes to do the monitoring and control for a test manager. Well, to begin with, of course, we need to recall something from the foundation, which is a continuation to this. Of course, uh, in the foundation, we told you monitoring is an ongoing activity which happens throughout the life cycle. However, the monitoring steps and matrices are selected during the test plan itself. That means during the test planning, the manager decides on the way, the periodic interval, and how exactly these would be put into a systematic report that is test progress report and presented to the stakeholders so that means it's not something which happens somewhere in the life cycle once or maybe at a particular point of time it just happens every single fixed interval of time throughout the life cycle and determination of that how we should do it what should be the presentation and what matrices are required to be monitored at what point of time in the life cycle should all be done during the test planning so right here we will be understanding what it takes to define these uh, matrices in terms of monitoring and what it takes for the manager to uh, take some of the key considerations into account however monitoring plays a very vital role monitoring keeps an eye on the ongoing progress as a part of it, which uh, you will observe some deviations as and when the deviations are observed, a control action will be taken where control action simply determines a corrective or guiding action which is taken as a result of deviation observed. So let's understand this further in more detail and try to see what exactly we are talking about. So number one, the test management uh, certainly should provide efficient test control. Uh, testing schedule and monitoring framework must be established to enable tracking of the status and process of testing. This framework should also include the detailed measures and targets that are required to relate the status of the test work product and resources to the plan and strategic objectives. Remember one thing, it's not a generic thing that you can just decide your own way of monitoring it. We have to go by the particular set of work products and the activities which are happening. So it becomes very crucial for our test manager to understand that what our test plan activities are and when and what will happen with by whom it will happen what exactly is important for different audiences right and based on that we select the required matrices the matrices play a very vital role if you have wrong selection of matrices you might not be reflecting the real data and it, at the same time it becomes very important for us to understand that it is so critical to establish that right framework which would certainly give me the timeline, will give me the schedule, will give me many other things which would also help me to uh, measure the right verticals or dimensions of the life cycle and report them to the rest of the stakeholder. At the same time, we would like to understand that when it comes to simple or small scale projects, it may be relatively easy to relate the test for product uh, and activities to the plan and strategic objective, but generally, more detailed objective must be defined to achieve this. This can include defining measures and targets that are required to meet test objectives and coverage of the test cases. Remember one thing, if you remember traceability from the chapter one of foundation, we told you that uh, traceability is not only for measuring the coverage, but it also helps you to measure the process capability, the product quality and definition of reporting things. So it's just not about monitoring a particular metric, but it's also about reflecting the data in a way that makes sense to every other stakeholder. For example, if I just executed 50 test cases today and I'm updating it as a part of my monitoring status update that uh, this week we executed 50 test cases, then it may not make sense to business stakeholders that what these 50 test cases have achieved until unless I put them into their format of reading it. Like, you know, these 50 test cases have executed or covered 25% of the requirement. Now that would make sense to the business stakeholder or leaderships because they don't know what these 50 test cases are all about and they cannot really get into the details of it. So it becomes very important for me to understand what the stakeholder, which means my audience of the reports are interested in. 
because these monitoring are done with respect to sharing the status update with everyone else. So as a manager, we need to think every single factor into account, talk to our audience and do that. Also to add here, of course, when it comes to the importance, it is the need to relate the status of the work product and activities in a manner that is understandable to the other stakeholders. So test monitoring and control are generally the overall ongoing activity. So it's not a one-time activity, we know that. So throughout the life cycle, we'll be doing monitoring, in fact, right from the planning itself. So let's add further to this. If we deep dive, we have some more activities to talk about. So test control on the other side compares actual progress against the test plan and implements corrective action as needed. It guides the testing to meet the test strategy and objectives. Uh, again, test strategies we'll be talking a little later, so not to worry about that, and revisits the test planning activities when necessary. The control data requires detailed test planning information for appropriate reactions. Remember the word appropriate plays a very vital role here because uh, the control actions are not well-defined or defined in advance. It's more of like, depending on the situation, what should I do now, right? So some of the things, for example, if you're driving a car and you see you're running out of fuel, you know that there's a ready-made solution to that. Like you will have to stop over to a gas station and pull up some fuel and then keep driving again. But there are some dynamic things. For example, if you're lost with the route, then you really don't have a pre-planned definition to what is plan B, right? And you will have to step down, dig into the options, try to talk to some people around and ask them what should be the right way to reach your destination. That's exactly what we're talking about. So in the real-time projects, we may have unforeseen situations. A test manager is someone who is very much interested to talk about it. And that's where they should be prepared for every single thing what may happen. So it is just not that like you may have a predefined set of actions to take as control actions. It must be as appropriate as possible because this control action should not only solve the problem, but at the same time should adhere to the plan as well. But Sometimes it may have some side effects, like change in this can result into updates in the plan or revisions in the plan. So you will have to again take approvals or acknowledgements from the other stakeholders. So let's talk about what are these activities. So these activities may involve implementing the test plan and control directives, managing deviations from the plan testing, treating newly identified and change risk, establishing re readiness to begin testing, granting and obtaining approval for test completion based on the exit criteria. If you notice here, we have discussed a few of the points like uh, implementing the test plan and control directives, which we have to implement to overcome the deviation, managing the deviation uh, from the plan testing if there's any kind of revisit to the plan and revisions, treating the newly identified risk. You may have new risk identified and you shall look forward to see what exactly to be done for this one. Because again, a risk is not something which you can only find in the beginning of the project. As the product unfolds and new informations are received, you may have new risk identified as well. And you may have to tweak your plan to handle them better. Also to add here, of course, readiness to begin testing. Whenever we have a control action, we might have done some additional activities. And due to that, you might need a new set of entry criteria to start something. And that's why this plays a vital role and also to talk about approvals, which we discussed already. So test monitoring involves collecting and recording test results, identifying deviations from the plan testing, identifying, analyzing new risk that requires testing and monitoring changes for the identified risk, which is a consistent activity. All of these are consistent. That means it's not something which is done just one time. So as a manager, we must have our mind wide open for monitoring all these aspects of the testing lifecycle and take appropriate control action. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.